Welcome back to Fundamentals of Operating System. This course is based on the textbook Operating System Concepts, 10th edition, by Silbershots, Gagney, and Galvin, published by Wiley Publishing. In the last lesson, we were introduced to the concept of page replacement. One of the things we discovered was that the action of replacing a page might involve two procedures. One is to write the page that's in memory back to swap space, and the other is to bring in the new page from swap space into memory. And we discovered that we could streamline this process a little bit if the pages that we were removing had not been modified. In other words, if the page has not been modified, there's no reason to write it back to disk because it's already there. One technique we found for determining whether or not a page that's in memory has been modified is to use a hardware device called a modified bit. The modified bit is changed whenever a byte within a page has been modified. If that modified bit has not been changed, there's no reason to write that frame back to the swap space because it's already there. By choosing frames that have not been modified, we're reducing the time it takes to do this swap in half. Because now instead of both writing back to disk and then reading in from disk, we only have to read in from the disk. So let's continue our study of page replacement policies and pick up where we left off. The simplest page replacement algorithm is a first-in, first-out algorithm. A first-in, first-out replacement algorithm associates with each page the time when that page is brought into memory. When a page must be replaced, the oldest page is chosen. Now note that it's not strictly necessary to record the time when a page is brought in. We can simply create a first in first out queue to hold all pages in memory. We replace the page at the head of the queue. When a page is brought into memory, we insert it at the tail of the queue. For our example string that you see here, our three frames are initially empty. Here are our three frames. The first three references, 7, 0, and 1, cause page faults and are brought in to these empty frames. The first page fault brings in the 7, the second page fault brings in the 0, and the third page fault brings in the 1. The next reference, 2, replaces the 7 because 7 was brought in first. Since 0 is the next reference and 0 is already in memory, we have no page fault for this reference. The first reference to page 3 results in the replacement of page 0, since it's now the first one in the line. Because of this replacement, the next reference to 0 will cause a page fault because it's been removed. Page 1 is then replaced by page 0. This process continues as shown in this figure. Every time a page fault occurs, we show which pages are in our three frames. There are 15 faults altogether. The first in, first out page replacement algorithm is easy to understand and program. However, its performance is not always good. On the one hand, the page replaced may be one that was used a long time ago and is no longer needed. On the other hand, as in that zero that we saw a moment ago, it could contain a heavily used variable that was initialized early and is in constant use. Even if we select for replacement a page that is in active use, everything still works correctly, but we can do it better. After we replace an active page with a new one, a fault occurs almost immediately to retrieve that active page. Some other page must be replaced to bring that active page back into memory. So a bad replacement choice increases the page fault rate and slows the process execution. It does not, however, cause incorrect execution. To demonstrate the problems that are possible with first in, first out page replacement algorithm, consider the following reference string. 
One, two, three, four. One, two, five. One, two, three, four, five. The figure on the right shows the curve of page faults for this reference string versus the number of available frames. Notice that the result of the number of faults for four frames is 10, which is greater than the number of faults for three frames, nine. This unexpected result is known as Bellady's anomaly. For some page replacement algorithms, the page fault rate may increase as the number of allocated frames increase. We would expect that giving more memory to a process would improve its performance. In some early research, though, investigators noticed that this assumption was not always true. Bellady's anomaly was discovered as a result. One result of the discovery of a Bellady's anomaly was the search for an optimal page replacement algorithm. Now the optimal page replacement algorithm is the algorithm that has the lowest page fault rate of all algorithms and will never suffer from Bellady's anomaly. Such an algorithm does exist and has been called opt or min. It is simply this, replace the page that will not be used for the longest time. Use of this page replacement algorithm guarantees the lowest possible page fault rate for a fixed number of frames. For example, using the reference string shown here, the optimal page replacement algorithm would yield nine page faults. The first three references cause page faults that fill the three empty frames. The reference to page two replaces page seven because page seven will not be used again until reference 18 whereas page 0 will be used at 5, and page 1 will be used at 14. The reference to page 3 will replace page 1, since page 1 will be the last of the three pages in memory to be referenced again. With only nine page faults, optimal replacement is much better than a first-in, first-out algorithm, which results in 15 faults. In fact, no replacement algorithm can process this reference strings in three frames with fewer than nine faults. Unfortunately, the optimal page replacement algorithm is hard to implement because it requires future knowledge of the reference string. As a result, the optimal algorithm is used mainly just for comparison. How about instead of basing it on the page that will not be needed for the longest time, we base it on the frame that has not been used in the longest time. If we use the recent past as an approximation of the near future, then we can replace the page that has not been used for the longest time. This approach is the least recently used algorithm. Least recently used replacement associates with each page the time of that page's last use. When a page must be replaced, least recently used chooses the page that has not been used for the longest time. We can think of this strategy as the optimal page replacement algorithm looking backward in time rather than forward. The result of applying least recently used replacement to our example reference string is shown here. The least recently used algorithm produces 12 page faults. Notice that the first five faults are the same as those for the optimal replacement. When reference to page four occurs, however, least recently used replacement sees that of the three frames in memory, page two was used least recently. So the least recently used algorithm replaces page two, not knowing that page two is about to be used again. When it then faults for page two, the least recently used algorithm replaces page three, since it is now the least recently used of the three pages in memory. Despite all these problems, least recently used replacement with 12 faults is much better than first in first out replacement with 15. This is a good place to stop. Let's take a break, go over your notes, update your study guide, and when you're ready, come on back and we will continue exploring the least recently used 
algorithm for page replacement.